Like I said, I read this over 300 page report from the Department of Transportation in Australia. And I'm gonna put it up on the screen. I'm gonna read this to you. This is what they said was the likely cause of Fred's disappearance. Hello, Earthlings. Welcome to Cloud Shadow TV. I'm Jessie. This is the Frederick Valentich Disappearance. This is my first series here on my channel. You know, here at the Alien Support Group, we talk about we talk about the phenomenon. We are believers. We know that, you know, we don't really know what aliens are or what UFOs are. You know, we know that we don't know, but we believe that there's something out there. That's what this alien support group is about. So if that sounds like you, come on, come join me. We're going to get to all the good, juicy alien sauce. So thank you for joining me. Welcome to Cloud Shadow TV alien and abduction support group but without further ado let's finish up this frederick valentich situation here let's get right into it another little fun thing is that fred never called it a ufo but immediately everyone else did it's even in the report mentioned as a ufo multiple times and Fred never called it that. He never said, it's a UFO, oh, it's aliens. If he was doing a hoax, don't you think he would have done that? Don't you think he would have been like, the aliens are here. Oh my gosh, they're attacking me. Aliens, 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 UFO, UFO, UFO. But no, he, he did not say any of that. The most he said was, it's hovering and it's not an aircraft. And he described the lights and like he was, I feel like if you were hoaxing, you would be way more straight up, you know? So the first time that the report from the trans the Department of Transportation um, mentions the UFO, they say this. They say the aircraft then made a farther report that that UFO was still in the vicinity. Considering Fred himself did not call it a UFO, it's pretty telling of what the Australian authorities thought that was happening. I think the Australian authorities themselves believed that this was a UFO. So. I thought that was an interesting little... <laughs> like I said, I read this over 300-page report from the Department of Transportation in Australia. And I'm going to put it up on the screen. I'm going to read this to you. This is what they said was the likely cause of Fred's disappearance. In the absence of any farther concrete evidence, one can only suggest a number of hypothe hypotheses to explain this disappearance. A. UFO intervention. No farther comment apart from the observation that there were no sighting reports of a brightly illuminated craft large enough to take on board a Cessna 182. The report says the most likely way that Fred disappeared was from a UFO. That's what the report, the government, the Australian government's report says that it was a UFO. So like, whoa. <laughs> I think that's pretty, that's, the, the Australian government thinks it's a UFO, guys. Anyways, the other less exciting things that they thought, B, disorientation. This was one of the theories that I discussed earlier. At the place and time of the occurrence, this is a distinct possibility and even probability. On the other hand, it would have resulted in uncontrolled impact with the sea, and one would have expected wreckage to result. No wreckage. Didn't find any wreckage. C, Controlled landing on the sea with the intention of escaping from the aircraft before it sank. This could have been successful or not successful. In either case, no wreckage would be found, and in the latter event, the body could still be in the aircraft. D. Successful landing elsewhere. Perhaps Valentich was not where he said he was, and he landed in a remote location. And E. Crash elsewhere when attempting... D, and the wreckage has not yet been discovered. I think that's pretty interesting that the actual report says that the most likely thing that happened was a UFO attack. So now we're on to the fun evidence, the stuff that like points more towards actually it was a UFO. Um, one thing that was on the original episode of Unsolved Mysteries, because this case was, you know, um, first kind of like really showcased on Unsolved Mysteries, but they, it's pretty short, so I wanted to go a little bit deeper into the dive. But there was this um, 
photographer named Roy Manifold, and he took a series of pictures of the sunset on October 21st, 1978. And he captured this strange picture in the series, and, like, the rest of them don't have it, where it's this, like, weird black little bob blob in the corner. I'll put the picture up. It was actually sent to labs and tested. Like, he was a photographer. He printed his photos all the time. He said he never had made a mistake like this. And, and so they actually had it sent to labs, and it was said that this is a part of the picture. It's not a mistake from the chemicals he was using or whatever. It, this was a part of the picture. And so it kind of looks like it could be a metallic thing with exhaust around it, but it is kind of a stretch. But it did happen on the same night, around the same time. So is it evidence? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. So here's some more fun evidence. Five days later, Steve Roby, the guy from the FSU that was talking to Fred, he worked for the aircraft, air traffic control and he was back at work and another pilot radioed in. They were above an area called East Sail and he said he was being followed by an intensely bright light that seemed like it was toying with him. And it was toying with him that it so much so that it forced him to prematurely land the aircraft, like, somewhere not an airport. And over 50 reports of UFOs were logged in the surrounding days of Fred's in incident um, in the area that his disappearance happened. These included... A senior constable Campbell of Forrest had a report from some children of an aircraft towing a glider in the Burwan Downs, Apollo Bay, area at about 5.30 to 6 o'clock p.m. on Saturday, October 21st. The report was made because it was unusual for a glider to be in that part of the state. And there were actually no gliders in the area um, that was, like, looked up. And so what they were seeing is more likely a UFO than a glider in this situation. A John Snow rang re-UFO, October 23rd, 1978. He was driving his car on a Saturday night, October 21st, 1978, at about 11.45 in the Barwin Heads area when his 11-year-old son saw a greenish white of some length flash quite fast across the sky to the south. It was not observed by any other member of the family in the car as it, is apparently, as it apparently had moved fast. And at approximately 1,800 hours on October 22nd, 1978, um, a phone call was received by one of the investigators. Mr. Parr stated that he was a responsible person, an officer of the Royal Australian Air Force Reserve, and he did not wish to create the opinion that he was a nut, which is funny. But he said, at about 1855 hours on Saturday, October 21st, 1978, he was traveling from Mount Waverley in a southerly direction Along Huntington Road, he observed a shower of very bright metallic scintillations to the south, high in the sky, at an angle of about 45 degrees from the horizontal, 1.5 degree of the area in vertical plane, and 1, 1 degree of are in the internal plane, about 30 bright entries, followed by a dark contrail moving from south to north. At first, he thought it to be a meteor shower. Then I found this, like, I'm going to show it up on the screen. There are actual reports that they had in the Australian government in the 1970s at the time where you could fill out UFO reports. Like, if you thought you saw a UFO, they had a specific report for you to fill out. So this is what one guy wrote on one. There's, like, a part where you just you do a narrative description of what happened. So he said, I was driving along the Great Declan Road between Y River, A. Lorne, W.E. left Y River about blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this dude was driving after about 7, 10 p.m. in this specific area that you can read on the thing, but his handwriting is not great. So you let me know where you think he was in the comments. My wife brought to my attention a light out to sea, which was described as a flare because it seemed to rise and then dip towards the sea. But later, it then rose again because of the nature of the road. I was unable to look for 30 SAS to one, oh, 30 seconds to one minute. 
At that time, the light seemed to be steady in the sky, and I said I thought it was an airplane, and we stopped watching. At the time, this explanation did not completely satisfy us, but we said, what else could it be? Just kind of crazy that they had a UFO report specifically for you to fill out. Now we got a bit of a doozy here. This is a report of a UFO sighting by my wife and self at 7.40 p.m. on the night of the of Saturday the 21st of October 1978 at Valley View, South Australia. On the above mentioned evening, I stepped outside to call out our cat when my wife was concerned as it had shunned her due to the fact that we had strange kittens in the house. After no response from the cat, I pondered and gazed in the sky. When I saw what I took to be a large plane approaching from the from an SSE direction, the plane appeared to be quite near when, with what I took to be its landing lights on and colored lights at both sides. I thought this an unusual direction for such an approaching heavy plane, as if it continued, it meant that it would have to cross the flight path of the major airliners heading for the Adelaide airport. My curiosity arose. I decided to wait and view this plane which I estimated would be directly overhead in approximately three minutes. To my amazement, this did not occur as it came no closer after having waited a period of some seven minutes or more. My wife came to see what I was doing outside so long and said to me, what on earth are you looking at in the sky? To which I replied, well, look at that end. Tell me what you think it is. Her reply was, it's not a star for it is too big. I then asked, well, what do you think it could be? To which she replied, it's a rocket. As you can see, the colored light's coming from it. I then said to her, If that's the case, how could it stay in the sky so long? For I have been watching it for between 7 to 10 minutes. Then she then said, No, you're right, it can't be. And the two of us stood gazing in amazement at the large white ye- yellow light and by now an assortment of colors flashing at the two sides. Having got my binoculars from within the house, I focused this, focused this object but I found my hands unsteady. So I rested them on a small statue on the patio. When I was able to finally focus absolutely clear onto the unexplainable object, what I saw was a large triangular yellow-white light laying on its side with one side of the triangle in a virtual position. Within the triangle flashing from point A, B, C, and D were iridescent lights. I can only positively remember three of the colors, which were blue, blue, green, and orange, but feel sure that there were also others. My wife watched it for nearly enough, for nearly enough 10 minutes and myself for a total of roughly 45 minutes before losing sight of it behind a large gum tree, two gardens away. During the last stages of viewing this assortment of colors, it transferred into a V shape, still on its side with the top half of coming to be the reflection of the lower portion, as one might view a boat sitting in the surface of the water. I reported this matter to the Edinburgh airport at 5.45 p.m. Monday on the 23rd of October and was told by a girl that this information would be passed on to the UFO investigation officer in the morning. By now, I was aware that I had seen word for word exactly as the missing Melbourne pilot had described. I rang again Edinburgh Airport the following day, October 24th, and spoke to an officer who told me he would try either to come see me at my place of work or at my home in the evening. As by the following day, October 25th, he had not made the effort to interview me. I again phoned and told him my concern, pleading for him to heed this information, which I felt so vital in the case of the missing pilot. After confirming my statement with my wife over the phone, this officer subsequently visited my home and took a signed statement for me, along with a diagram of the three stages that this moving light had taken. I have no doubt in my mind that whatsoever I witnessed was exactly as the young pilot described who has gone missing and was said to be flying upside down at the time of the 21st of October. I am prepared to swear on the oath or submit myself to a lie detector test to, sus- to sustain this statement. She shows a lot of reading. Two months later in New Zealand, there was an incident called the Christchurch Incident. So, on December 20th, 1978, Augustus freight planes claimed that strange lights were following them, and it was actually confirmed on radar. Various numbers of them followed for about 20 miles, at a distance of about one kilometer. On December 30th, a reporter named Quentin Fogarty uh, joined a flight with them. 
and the lights actually happen again. And again, they're confirmed on radar. And they're described as very large lights with some orange on the top of some of them. So they decide to go back so that the reporter can get a better camera. So he does. He goes back and he gets the camera and they go back. But this time it's not as friendly. It's actually, it's actually pretty frightening. This time they're followed for longer and more aggressively. The UFOs were flying so low that they could see their reflection in the water. And this was all caught on radar. Then that guy I was talking about earlier, Richard Haynes, who, like, claims to have the tape with Fred's actual voice on it, well, he thought that Fred's story lined up with these other strange plane disappearances. So, according to Richard Haynes, um, here's the list that he kind of saw as a pattern of UFO incidents with pilots. In 1970, U.S. pilot William Schaffner, who was um, based in the U.K., he never returned um, after going to check out a UFO incident, and they actually found his plane, but his body was not inside of it, and the canopy, canopy was completely closed like he should have been inside the plane. In 1973, he listed a case called the Coin Case, This is when a helicopter was apparently pulled up 2,000 feet by a tractor beam from a UFO. Crazy. Now, this is all, like, allegedly what Richard Haynes is saying. Just so you know. In 1975, Carlos de los Santos said that a UFO was harassing him while he was on a flight. He also said that his aircraft was pulled up by a tractor beam. In 1976, a Tehran UFO actually stopped a bunch of fighter jets from firing missiles. They all jammed, apparently. In 1977, there was something called the Castillo de Bodie case in Portugal, which was when a plane was nearly hit by a UFO and caused it to do a nosedive off of the Dornier. So those are Richard's, like, lists that he had of similar incidents that he considered Frederick Valentich's incident to be and disappearance to be, like, a part of. Then also... Like, in research, I found that in 1980, there was these other pilots that were in Puerto Rico on June 28th in 1980. Jose Pagan Santos was in the Mona Channel of the Caribbean Ocean with Jose Antonio Maldonado Torres. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And they took off at 1810, and they were in an air coup. Air coup? They were in an air coup which was owned by Jose Pagan Santos's father, whose name was Jose Pagan Jimenez. His dad was actually an Aero police officer um, in Puerto Rico, which is interesting. But at 2003, Las Mesas radar site and several aircraft picked up transmission from Jose's plane that they said that they saw a strange object and it messed with them before they were cut off and disappeared with no trace to ever be found. So I'm going to actually play that recording because that recording is available to hear. So here's that recording now.
and no trace of their aircraft was ever found either. Another little Easter egg, I guess you could say, I found in the report was that somebody suggested in the report they actually wrote that they should share their findings with the Ministry of Defense, actually. And they stated that it is relevant that investigation of reports of unidentified flying objects rest with your colleagues, the Minister for Defense. You may care to give them a copy of this message. Appropriate officers at the working level of the Royal Australian Air Force have already been informed. But like I said, even if the plane had crashed and they found it, unless like Fred was in it, even still, I don't know. It's hard to fight that this was aliens or UFO related, unless it was military. You know? So Fred's father, Guido, actually believes that Fred was abducted. And I think that this is more comforting to him than the other possibilities. And also he himself, he has said that he was a much bigger believer in aliens than Frederick himself. So, you know, if he wants to believe that his son is out there in space, still living, I think we can give him that. I would prefer to believe that, you know, maybe that... Maybe that's what he did in his next life, even if he did pass away. You know? Who knows? Let's hope Fred's out there in space, you know, prospering for the humans out there. You never know. This is the support group. We are supportive. Unfortunately, Guido did pass away in the year 2000. I truly believe that there is, like, enough solid evidence. There's these other UFO sightings, the strange things that he said... The way that they never found any wreckage from his plane or like anything else around it. I really believe that there's a lot of evidence that this could have been an alien intervention, as the report puts it. And they believed it too, the Australian government. So for me, I'm sold. I think that this was alien intervention. The Australian government thinks this was alien intervention. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe. What do you think? Do you think that it was a hoax or or an accident or disorientation? For me, I think that if it wasn't aliens, then it had to be disorientation or military. I think really honestly, I think aliens, military, disorientation, other bullshit. <laughs> so yeah let me know what you think in the comments like subscribe i made an instagram this is cloud shadow tv i'm jesse welcome to the alien abduction support group let's support each other let's learn about aliens together let's try to like figure this shit out what is going on what is going on we're learning together guys so if there's any topics that you want me to cover or cases that you find particularly interesting if there's any like cr- nice critiques you want to give me a compliment sandwich about what you thought about this video i would love a compliment sandwich please like and subscribe i really appreciate you watching what do you think happened to fred i think he was abducted by aliens i'm with guido all right earthlings i'll see you next time thanks for watching have a great day